Ever wonder just what kind of weird stuff is buried in the Netflix catalog? You could spend all day scrolling around in search of the strange, but we've got you covered. Let's take a look at some of the most bizarre films you can find on Netflix. Wetlands Based on the novel by Charlotte Roche, this movie features unrealistically massive amounts of bodily fluids to tell the stark, true, and riveting story of an 18-year-old woman coming of age. While exploring the human body in an act of rebellion against her mother, she finds herself trying to rekindle a love between her divorced parents while falling for her male nurse, a man she met after a shaving accident gone terribly wrong. Hard to be a god the Guardian called Hard to Be a God a monumental and monumentally mad film. Based on the novel of the same name by Arkady and Boris Strogatsky, it's set in what looks like a medieval sci-fi Russia, but on a different planet that looks remarkably like Earth. There, two competing factions called Blacks and Greys are at war. The peasants are disfigured, ugly, and stuck in copious amounts of blood and mud for eternity. The film forces its audience to ponder another world like ours, where life is and has been much worse. Upstream Color this is a movie about a parasite that passes between humans, pigs, and orchids. Surprisingly, that's not the weirdest thing about it. A man known as the Thief manages to implant a worm in a woman called Chris that allows her to mentally communicate with pigs, which also allows her to come to grips with her very dysfunctional relationship with her boyfriend Jeff. It prompted Slate critic Forrest Wickman to write, I just saw Upstream Color. What just happened? A question we're still trying to answer. God of Cookery this film about the rise, fall, and rise again of a Chinese chef tickles your funny bone while playing to a very specific audience. Variety describes it as an entertaining, often very funny blend of high-energy Cantonese comedy and culinary kung fu. But if you're not a fan of both cooking and martial arts, don't worry, because it's hilarious and daring enough for any movie lover to enjoy. Three-Headed Shark Attack If you looked at the title of this movie and thought it screamed for actor Danny Trejo, then you're in luck! You'll find him in a fishing boat full of guns and ammo beheading a three-headed shark. The plot is straightforward enough. The mutant creature in the title attacks a ship and it won't stop until it's eaten everyone, while the passengers use anything they can to fight it off. What's not to love? It's like Jaws, plus two more heads, and also terrible, but in the very best way. Now what could possibly top that? What about a movie called The ABCs of Death? What if you hired 26 directors, one for each letter of the alphabet? Then, what if you tasked each of them with crafting a short film that needed only to fall into a certain runtime and follow a narrative built around death? That's exactly what producers Ant Thomas and Tim League did with this experimental anthology film. Watch it for the cinematography and for some seriously boundary-pushing butt jokes. He never died. The tagline to He Never Died gets right to the point. It's hard to live when you can't die. Actor, singer, author, and bicycle short enthusiast Henry Rollins plays Jack. Jack's a kind of mysterious anti-hero whose listless drift through middle age is upended when his teenage daughter is kidnapped. Rollins plays Jack as a subtle homage to Arnold Schwarzenegger's Terminator, which is probably the least weird thing about the film. Probably just gonna go kill another room full of people. You are? Probably. Come on! Daemonium. Unless it's coming from Guillermo del Toro, a little bit of fantasy horror goes a long way. Where Del Toro enthralled audiences with Pan's Labyrinth, Argentinian director Pablo Perez, Demonium, opts to go full-out weird at the expense of plot, pacing, and character development. That's cool, though, because instead, Demonium delivers a bizarre mix of demons, wizards, and martial arts action that flirts with your eyes like a splash of drain cleaner. Just about every 10 minutes, Demonium goes from bad to badass, to bad acid and back again. An endless carousel completely unfettered by logic. Just sit back and enjoy the ride. The Scribbler what if you were a killer and didn't know it? That's the question asked by The Scribbler, which follows a woman named Suki with multiple personalities living in an apartment building sanctioned for psychiatric patients. She's talking in metaphors. We need to figure out what they mean. Just how crazy are you? One by one, the women in the building start dying, allegedly jumping to their deaths. The movie is told within the framework of Suki's interrogation by the police after the fact, giving it a weird sense of altered chronology and an unreliable narrative. After all, it's a story being told by a crazy woman. So yeah, it gets way weird as the story progresses. Superpowers, insanity, a totally freaky god machine, all hidden behind the closed doors of a psychiatric institute. It boasts some pretty sleek visuals and a unique storyline if nothing else. Nightwatch Daywatch Before he made his English language debut with 2008's Wanted, or his follow-up 2012's Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, Timur Bekmambetov wrote and directed the double feature of Nightwatch and Daywatch. These two sci-fi films simply don't follow any of the norms of Hollywood blockbusters, and that's a good thing. Probably. 
The dreamlike dissonance of these movies is enough to make you question your own sanity, since the only constant rule in the day-night watch universe is make it shiny. All the plot threads about alternate dimension and vampires and ancient forces do come together in a sort of coherent story, but it's a hard weave to figure out. Good luck. Deathgasm Once upon a time, someone watched Scott Pilgrim vs. the World and thought, this would be a lot better with more heavy metal and naked women. And maybe someone, like, I don't know, beats up a demon with a sex toy. It's a thought we've all had at some point. You're having that thought right now. Admit it. Anyway, whatever caused it to happen, Deathgasm is now an irretrievable piece of the world. It's out there, unable to be undone. So what is the film supposedly about? Well, it follows four teenagers who start a metal band in their garage and inadvertently play a song that unleashes hell on their quiet suburban neighborhood. To save the town, they have to pretty much kill everybody in it. New Zealand's been giving us some great quirky comedies lately, like What We Do in the Shadows, and Deathgasm is certainly part of the gang, even if it's the weird kid that hangs out in the back acting like a spaz. Zombievers A movie called Zombievers, featuring singer John Mayer and comedian Bill Burr, should get your attention. Hey man, you see that deer up there? Yeah, I see. I don't think you do. Especially when the plot follows the fallout from a toxic waste spill that sends a swamp full of zombie beavers to attack a gang of helpless teenagers. According to RogerEbert.com, Zombievers is exactly what it sounds like, a stoner-friendly horror comedy about undead beavers. Finally! Truth in advertising! Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.